I inform the Senate that at 8.30 a.m. today, eight proposals were received in accordance with Standing Order 75. The question of which proposal would be submitted to the Senate was determined by lot. As a result, I inform the Senate that the letter from Senator Urquhart proposing a matter of public importance was chosen. It is shown at item 13 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? The proposal is supported. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers for today's discussion. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly, and I call Senator Green. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be joining uh, the Senate from Cairns tonight um, to be talking about this incredibly important issue. Um, it is clear that we have been led down a path of complacency by the Prime Minister. This is not a race. Those were the words that he used and the words the Prime Minister sh will be forever haunted by. In what has been become the most important of our times, at least in our lifetimes, where Australians have needed strong and effective leadership, we have been badly let down and we are all suffering the consequences. Half of the country is currently in lockdown. People are under immense stress. Workers are losing their jobs. Businesses that people have spent their entire lives building are closing their doors. And yet our Prime Minister said, it is not a race, it is not a competition. And he didn't just say that once, he said it repeatedly. Scott Morrison said the vaccine rollout was not a race on the 11th of March this year, and he said it three times. He said it twice on the 14th of March and again on the 13th, 31st of March as well. And why is this phrase so important? Why did it mean so much to the Australian people? Because it led to the complacency that this government has allowed to occur that has dropped our vaccine rollout down to the lowest level in the rest of the OCD countries. We are now seeing, as a result, the highest daily COVID case numbers since the pandemic began 18 months ago. And we all saw those terrifying numbers in New South Wales announced earlier today of 818 cases. It is a dire and difficult situation for all of the residents, including my family who live in southwest Sydney. People are dying, children are getting sick. The burden on families and businesses is immeasurable. People are struggling to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and yet the government thinks that this is what they need to be talking about. Scott Morrison uh, says that he doesn't play politics with the pandemic, and yet we have seen time and time again uh, this Prime Minister uh, feel that he doesn't need to support a lockdown in New South Wales, but also crucify other states for imposing restrictions in an effort to save their communities from ongoing pain. And it was precisely that encouragement of the New South Wales Premier and her decision not to lock down this Delta outbreak that has caused so much damage to our economy and to our society. The fact is that we're in this position because Prime Minister Scott Morrison failed to do his job. He failed to do two things, fix quarantine and get the vaccine rollout right. This is, in fact, a race, and it has always been a race. It's been a race for survival for so many communities and so many people. But the stark reality of the numbers that we have seen in the last couple of days shows that Scott Morrison has failed. You only need to look at the vaccination rates of some of our most vulnerable Australians to understand this. If you're an aged care worker, a person with a disability, an Indigenous Australian, you have been let down by this Prime Minister. If you see that the data that was released recently showed that the two states with the largest First Nations populations, New South Wales and Queensland, are sitting at critically low levels of First Nations vaccination rates. As of last week, both were sitting at around 8%. And these people were priorities in, under this government. And today we're seeing startling figures around the number of staff working in aged care homes that are yet to be vaccinated. And we know that in the Melbourne and Victorian lockdowns of last year, the fact that aged care workers carried viruses into homes was devastating for so many people and so many families. This government was fully warned about needing to vaccinate aged care workers, and yet the Scott, Scott Morrison said that it was not a race. 
Today, we have reports that in some facilities in my hometown of Cairns, that we've got vaccination rates of aged care workers sitting at less than 10%. Less than 10% after six months of the vaccine rollout under Scott Morrison. If you're an NDIS participant, chances are you haven't even had your first dose yet. Just over a quarter of NDIS participants have been fully vaccinated. First doses have only reached 44%. And these people, the NDIS participants that we are talking about today, were in the priority uh, 1A under this government. And yet Scott Morrison said that it was not a race. These are groups that the federal government say are our highest priority and the most vulnerable people that we need to get vaccinated. Otherwise, we'll never be able to open up again. But, but Scott Morrison continues, continued to say, that this was not a race. The truth is, in times of crisis, people need a leader, someone that stands up for us or faces the tough questions, makes big calls, someone that is decisive, someone that can offer hope. And yet what we got instead with this Prime Minister was, it's not my job, it's a matter for the states, I don't hold a hose. We get a Prime Minister that sits back and lets members of his own government ranks spew irresponsible drivel about misinformation, about COVID-19, about masks, about lockdowns. It is no wonder that there is hesitancy in the community when the Prime Minister has failed to stop these people saying that masks don't work, that lockdowns don't work and that you don't need to get the vaccine. I'm not the only one that feels so bitterly and disappointed about the position that Australians find themselves in. I'm lucky enough to live in one of the best parts of the world in far north Queensland, but our town is hurting badly and it is a devastating sight to see. Cafes which are normally full of tourists are near empty. At this time of year, the lagoon pool on our famous esplanade is usually bustling with people, but right now it is sparse. The marina is full of boats as there simply aren't enough people to take them out. North Queensland's tourism industry is on the brink and there are widespread fears in the industry and the community that this is the end for many operators. They survived 2020, but now they will close their doors. A local tourism leader said recently, the tourism industry is on its knees. Another who closed their doors last week after operating for 30 years said, I won't be the last one. Further down in the Whit Sundays, operators are facing a similar situation. As one early beach business suggests, their struggles are far from over and the outlook is still pretty dismal. This has always been a race and the Morrison government must step up and provide certainty to North Queensland businesses as they continue to struggle in this pandemic from the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are at a crisis point now with this, these communities. The Prime Minister needs to face these businesses and give them a plan forward, not just a vaccination plan or a plan to end lockdowns, which we know will happen eventually, but not for some time to come. We need a plan for support. And that's what I've been calling for in Cairns and, and in these speeches in Parliament is for a, a wage subsidy scheme for these businesses. That is what they have been calling for. And extraordinarily, today we've discovered that the local member, Warren Inch, decided that instead of approaching the minister, instead of approaching the treasurer or the prime minister directly for this additional support, actually wrote to the state government to ask for support and said that the support that had already been provided by the Commonwealth government was inadequate, that it hadn't gone far enough. It is pretty extraordinary when you've got a member of this government knowing that it would be better to approach the state government for support than to go and ask for support from the Treasurer, from um, Scott Morrison. It is also pretty extraordinary that we're in a situation now where we know that people are going to lose their jobs and yet the Morrison government has failed to deliver support for these businesses. These are people who have supported the coalition in the past. These are people who've supported the local member in the past, but they have been hung out to dry under this government. What these businesses and what these tourism operators need is a wage subsidy scheme. 
They need that now because of Scott Morrison's failures. They need that now because we are in lockdown and we're not going to be out of lockdown for quite some time to come. Vaccinations rates are increasing, but not fast enough to save these businesses. We know how important it is for these businesses to get tourism support. And yet the government has failed to deliver on wage subsidies that will actually protect jobs. The local member, Warren Ench, said himself that this support that has been given so far from the Commonwealth Government is inadequate and falls short of what is required. So we are asking the federal government to finally step up. This is a race. It is a race to deliver support to businesses before they close their doors. Order it is Senator a race Green. to get people vaccinated. Uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, well, I'm sure the good people of Leichhardt will uh, know that their MP, Warren Inch, is an outstanding representative who will always fight for their interests in this place and wherever he uh, has an opportunity to advocate in their best interests. And he's done that for many, many, many years, and I have every single confidence that he'll do it after the next federal election as well. Let's have a look at this matter of public interest. And the first thing I note about it is it's backward looking. It is backward looking. It's talking about what happened, what was said in March 2021. We're talking about this the last two weeks of sitting, and we're back here today. A matter of public interest that's backward looking, looking at the past. It's not looking at the present. It's not looking at the future. It's playing a blame game on, in the past. A blame game in the past. Looking at words that were uttered in March 2021. The Australian people have moved on. The Australian people have moved on. They're looking at today, and they want to look towards their future. They want to look towards their future. So if Senator Green is interested in correspondence with the Premier of Queensland, maybe she should pick up the phone and talk to the Premier of Queensland about her comments over the last few days and of Deputy Premier Stephen Miles, which appear to suggest some sort of resiling from the national agreement which was entered into by the National Cabinet. So maybe Senator Green needs to communicate with the Premier of Queensland, just as the MP for Leichhardt, my good friend Warren Inch, has communicated with, with uh, the Premier. Because some of the rhetoric coming out of Queensland is disturbing. It's political and disturbing. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts of where we're up to actually at the moment. Where are we today? 1.8 million doses of vaccine delivered in the last seven days. 1.8 million doses delivered in the last seven days. I don't remember that being referred to in Senator Green's uh, discussion in her contribution to this debate. There was absolutely no recognition whatsoever as to what the current status is with respect to the vaccine rollout. No balanced commentary. How can someone take seriously a, a contribution in this place if there's a total lack of balance in terms of the representation as to what the current facts are? More than 85 per cent of over 70s are protected with the first dose of the vaccine. Over 85 per cent of that most vulnerable cohort already protected by a first dose of the vaccine, and more than 55 per cent have received a second dose. Going to the next cohort, over 70 per cent of over 50s are protected with a first dose, and more than 40 per cent have received a second dose. And that means more than one in two of the eligible population aged over 16 are protected with a first dose. Look at the facts, Madam Acting Deputy President. Look at the facts involved in the case. And if you want to criticise, if you want to criticise the existing government, make a contribution that's balanced, that takes into account the current situation, and then make some sort of constructive, constructive proposal with respect to moving forward. All of that was totally absent from Senator Green's contribution to this debate. It hasn't been absent with respect to the Prime Minister's, the Prime Minister's contributions. He said this. He might have said what he said in March, but he also said this subsequently, and I quote, I take responsibility. I take responsibility for the early setbacks in our vaccination program. Full stop. End quote. He said that. So at least when you get up on the other side, at least when those speakers on the other side get up, recognise the fact that the prime minister has taken responsibility, but also recognise the fact, also recognise the fact that, and I quote, I also take responsibility for getting them fixed and that we are now matching world's best rates with more than one million doses." End quote. 
also recognise that. Make a balanced contribution to this debate. Make a balanced contribution to this debate and stop looking backwards. Stop looking backwards. Move on. Look at the current situation and provide something positive for the Australian people to move forward in, forward with. The Australian public is sick and tired of rank-based politicking on these issues. They really are, and the rhetoric is just dreadful, and it continues to be dreadful. We need to come together. We need to come together as a civic society and deal with these issues. It should be recognised. It should be recognised that up to today's date, Australia has done. Australia has done as well as any country on the face of this earth dealing with this vaccine, dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. We've done as well as anyone, as well as anyone, as a country. Just as we're uniting as a country to assist those poor Afghanis in Kabul and provide them assistance. As a country, we've done as well as anyone. Has it been perfect? No. But there was no dress rehearsal for one in 100 year pandemic. There was no dress rehearsal. So there will be mistakes. There will be things that need to be adjusted. But at least be balanced in terms of your commentary. Because at least when you're balanced, I can have some sort of respect for the positive suggestions that come from the other side. Otherwise, all your contributions are just tainted with that rank politicking. The Prime Minister made some extremely, extremely positive comments today with respect to our pathway out of this pandemic. The first point he made was this. We need to live with the virus, not in fear of it. We need to live with the virus, not in fear of it. And that is absolutely crucial. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is that we are not going to eliminate COVID in the foreseeable future. We just won't. And the Australian people, the Australian people, I think, generally understand that. And we have to assist them in terms of coming to grips with the reality of the situation, which is well documented in the national plan on a page, plan on a page. We're currently in phase one, the current phase, vaccinate, prepare and pilot. The next phase, once we achieve that 70 per cent threshold, is the vaccine transition phase, which, and I quote, and this is the important point, seeks to minimise serious illness, hospitalisation and fatality as a result of COVID-19 with low level restrictions. It doesn't seek to eliminate it because that's not possible. It's not possible to eliminate it. It seeks to minimise serious illness, hospitalisation and fatality as a result of COVID-19 with low level restrictions. And then phase C, once we hit the 80 per cent threshold of vaccinations, seek to minimise serious illness, hospitalisations and fatalities as a result of COVID-19 with baseline restrictions. And then phase four, phase D as it's referred to, manage COVID-19 consistent with public health management of other infectious diseases. We have to all get on the same page, on the one-page national plan. We all have to be on the same page if we're going to defeat the ramifications of this virus and move forward as a united country. We need to be on the same page. And it's there, it's there in black and white for all of us to follow and to support with our community. And if there are constructive, if there are constructive issues, if there are constructive suggestions from those opposite, absolutely make those constructive suggestions and, and make them, absolutely make them. But when you do it, at least be fair with respect to assessing the current situation and be fair with respect to how the Australian, Australia as a country, and I include local level government, the states, the federal government, civic society generally, the Australian people, be fair and balanced with respect to where we are today instead of running our own country down. It's quite deplorable, the rhetoric. We, we're not going to get out of this crisis with this sort of rhetoric. We are not going to get out of this crisis with this sort of re rhetoric. Absolutely not. This has to be a team game. It's got to be a team game, Madam Acting Deputy President. We cannot go indefinitely. We can't go on indefinitely in lockdown. We just can't do it. We don't have the financial resources to do it. We can't bear the mental illness that is, flows from these lockdowns. We're crushing people's mental health. Small businesses are being destroyed. Senator Green did refer to the impact on tourism in Cairns, and she's absolutely right. It's a devastating impact in Cairns. But we have to, we have to unite behind the national plan and move forward. We absolutely have to. There's no alternative. There's absolutely no, no alternative whatsoever. And as we do that, as we unite behind that national plan, as we do that, we need to do it with mutual respect. We have to do it with mutual respect 
for the views of all those in the chamber and all those in the community. So many people in this country are, are struggling on so many levels, and we need to respect and appreciate that everyone has a right to their own views in our democratic society. We need to do it with empathy, appreciating how difficult the current situation is for everyone in this country. And we also need to look forward. We need to look forward in hope, look forward in hope rather than backwards in bitterness. That's what people are looking for us to do, to look forward in hope, not backwards in bitterness. Thank you, Senator Scar. Senator Seawitt. Thank you. And I've only got a couple of minutes before adjournment. Uh, we move to adjournment. I am looking to the future. I'm looking to the future of this country and the health of our population. And in order to do that, we need to get the plan right. And that plan is not right because does, it does not include vaccinate, vaccinating and, importantly, targets for young people in the national plan. The government says we're going to open up at getting to 80 per cent, but 80 per cent is actually only 64 per cent of the entire population. And children and young people under the age of 16 are the ones that are now high getting COVID in large numbers. In Victoria alone, 112 Children under the age of 10 have COVID, 112 between the age of 10 and 19. Over 200, I think it is today, in New South Wales, children, and yet children are not included in our targets. Children are not included in our targets. So until we include children in our targets, we will not get properly to 80 per cent. Order. And if Senator Seawitt, uh, it being 7.20pm, I propose that the Senate now adjourn. Senator Bragg.